and oh wow we may be heads up in a second i am game flopping trips jack garbarina with the overpair kings can't be overly concerned about the four I'm gonna be betting targeting the jacks in his opponent's range i am game just raises it here right here right now i don't see how jack gets away from this hand he's got kings on a jack 4-4 board blind versus blind Today we are going to be reviewing a million dollar Sunday. This is our third million dollar Sunday review. Doing these weekly, really digging them. Really loving doing these reviews. Definitely getting a lot out of them. Hope that you are too. Um, today, the prize pool is, as you see it, a uh, guaranteed payout of 13300 for eighth place. Going all the way up to $159,200 for the winner of this tournament. We just saw our man Patrick starts. Uh, getting second place in the Moss for $57,000. So this man's having a fantastic Sunday. Let's get to know our players and then let's get into this final table. So Patrick Starr, we saw just had a big score. Plays very well. Plays very well. Picks his spots. Not afraid to mix it up. Not afraid to get, get aggressive. So he's going to be a fun one to watch. Obelisk, average buying of $200. Six figures in payouts. So he's got some solid wins and 98 on Shark Scope. Uh, FCMCB, we don't know a lot about. Only having 20 games on Shark Scope, but an average buy-in of $2,000. So this is a high-stakes player. Probably plays 265, 630s, 1Ks, and Venoms. So high-stakes player. Won't be afraid to do battle. Dragalesco, a little bit lower on the average buy-in. 400. A little bit lower on the scores. Bald Brazzers, blocked from search. I am game, blocked from search. Jack Garbarino, I'm pretty sure we saw in a previous... Final table, no stranger to these spots. Uh, quarter million in earnings, $300 average buy in, 99 on Shark Scope. And Siganuxo, also a little bit of an unknown on uh, 46 total games. So, once to watch, certainly Jack Garbarino, Patrick Starr, and um, we'll see what FCMB and Obelest do. We'll have some wild cards here. I'm pretty sure I've seen Ball Brazzers around. So, those are our players. We've got our payouts there. You got it, Mike. And uh, now we're just going to get on into it. And here, I imagine we're going to fold around. Siganuxo does have the best of it. An ace on the button. Good enough to open. Question is, will he take it? He's limping ace, queen suited, blind versus blind. Maybe he doesn't want to play ace rank. But he does take the race. Now, Patrick, good enough hand to defend here. Getting a nice price. Put in one big blind to play for five and a half. Two Broadway cards. He takes the shove. I like it. This way he doesn't even need to hit the flop and he can increase his stack by about 30 percent exactly what he does and should probably get through to the big blind who i think will defend it's one of those spots where if it folds to Siganix, so he's raising but versus raise he's fold if it folds to patrick star he may be playing those deuces but raised ahead he's gonna pass i'm sure he'd be love to be in there right now with deuces but um the math just simply wasn't there to justify playing on and I don't think we'll see F said MCB folding for just one bet here. One big blind, pretty enticing, pretty inviting. We see that playback. We've seen that in some previous tournaments on these boards where it's unlikely anyone's hit. You're being offered a really nice price because your opponent's betting small just with their whole range. So throw a little check raise in there. Not a bad idea. Risking three to win 6.6. .6. Only needs to work like a third of the time to be profitable. What do you do if you're bald brazzers? Shove and hope your opponent's on a bluff. Hope they don't have an eight, a three or a two that's calling. It's the one downside of not just open shoving those hands. Is sometimes you can get outplayed post flop, but there are also the occasions where they both flop an ace and bald brazzers gets the double up. See Siganuxo opening up kind of the same situation. See if Dragalesco decides it's worth taking one off. It does. Don't expect we'll see any playback here though. This looks like a spot where Siganuxo put in a continuation bet. Dragalesco, probably just going to let it go. This could be a shove for Obelisk on seven blinds. Yep. Dragalesco, probably going to call. Doesn't love it. He is beating this hand. He is buying ace king. I think there, there are enough hands in Obelisk range that ace queen's beaten. I think Dragalesco should find the call. Obelisk is going to have, yeah, ace king, but they're also going to have ace jack, ace 10. Ace nine, we'll see some suited aces too. King queens, broadways. Yeah, Obelisk does call. And that's going to be an easy call for Siganuxo with kings here. 
They're going to be going for the double knockout and trying to pick up the 60 million chip pot. Two aces dead. It's pretty good odds. Oh my god. And it still comes. Always an ace, they say. Always an ace, they say. Oh, just brutal. All right. And with that, Obelisk going to be our eighth place finisher as expected for $13,300 when we saw that all in. I mean, they had no hope. They needed two nines or ace nine. And Dragalesco does not go out seventh as we would have expected. Instead, picks up the 85 million chip pot and is now in second place. What a turn of events. Dragalesco debating going wide here. We do have the super short stack, which is why you might go a little wider. I think if you're Siga Nuke, so you got to take it with your fives. He's going to get it in as a pretty big favorite here. Just needs to fade a queen three. Oof. Queen on the river. You hate to see it. Siganuxo got it in good a couple of times. Took a couple of bad beats. The second one was, was ouch. The first one was devastatingly painful, though. And uh, with that, Siganuxo going to be our seventh place finisher. Taking home $23,300. And we are now down to the final six players. Everyone here guaranteed $33,300. Dragolesco picking up a premium ace king. Jack Garbarino picking up kings. It's the dream spot as long as the ace doesn't come. He's definitely going to be getting called. Playing an 80 million chip pot. Just needs no ace to roll off on the river. And boom, Jack Garbarino up to 80 million. Getting pretty close to the big stacks there. So just a quick reassessment getting our bearings back of where things are uh, our chip leader fz mcb 90 mil dragalesco tied with the chip lead 90 mil jack garbarino in third here but after this pot it's gonna have 85 mil so he's right there with the big boys our short stacks are bald brazzers and patrick star both having 30 million which is 10 big blinds and i am game our fourth place stack in the middle of the field is sitting on 23 big blinds 69 million. So that MCB does get a piece of this flop. You'd have to think that after defending King 7 suited from the small blind, that when he flops mid pair and a backdoor flush try, he's not just going to be folding it to a single bet. I like that Jack Arborino is going for a larger sizing there because if his opponent does have a 10 or a 7 or a pocket pair that they slow played pre flop, uh, he wants to build the pot up quickly get more value and give a worse price to those hands that are you know looking at a five out or draw now it goes for the shove on the turn for protection built up the pot nicely i think it's good and our new chip leader jack garbarino ace nine bvb and eights two big hands um f said mcb wanting to play cautious because of the two shorter stacks so it comes with the limp here i think dragalesco probably going to be raising eights is an extremely premium hand and he does have his opponent out chipped, so he can apply a lot of pressure, both pre-flop and post-flop. Does not go for the raise. Instead, just opts to let his opponent flop top pair while he flops bottom set. Juicy. Very juicy spot here. Yeah. Do we raise now, hoping our opponent has an ace? Or do we call? Because our opponent really doesn't have that many aces. And if he has a 10 or some kind of gut shot, we want to give him the opportunity to keep barreling. I think if our opponent's taking the lead here, I want to let him keep it. Dragolesco decides otherwise, says, I want to raise it now and build this pot. And we got to know F said MCB calling the first one. Question is, how much money is going to make it into the middle here? Most of the hands that are better than ace nine would be raising pre-flop. It's very surprising that eights is in the range. Tens isn't there. Ace isn't there. Ace jack plus usually raising. Ace 10 probably raising. So it's really like 10, eight or nothing. And we saw Dragolesco get frisky before with the king queen. So maybe again... F said could think he's doing this with some gut shots or the like. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see another call here. Yep. We got about a pot size bet. Dragolesco set this up to be able to go for all the chips. Hoping his opponent gets stubborn with an ace. I don't think you can worry about the backdoor flush draw too much. Okay, yeah, sure. Occasionally your opponent might have queen 10 of spades, 10 7 of spades or something, but I think with how much ace pair of aces and two pairs there are you just got to go for the full installment with eights here or at least a healthy bet somewhere between eight blinds and yeah eight blinds and 15 
And eight is the right sizing. 15 blinds. If he put them all in, FZ may have folded. But because he put in, you know, half pot and left FZ with some chips where he could potentially spin it back up, he gets the snap call. And that is a massive pot for Dragolesco, which puts him up to 150 million chips, 43 big blinds, new chip leader. And this is going to be very interesting because he's the chip leader and we have three very short stacks. FZ with five bigs. Patrick with six bigs, Bald Brazzers with eight bigs, and big pay jumps. So this is going to be a great spot for Dragolesco to apply a lot of pressure so long as these short stacks are in play. And I think we'll see a call here for five bigs. FZ should be moving in with any pocket pair here. And uh, Sevens is beating a lot of those pocket pairs. Plus, after that extremely juicy pot... Our man's feeling pretty flush. No jack, no 10. Ooh. Dragolesco was going to find the knockout and the pay jump, but instead, FC finds the double with jack 10 suited. Jack Arena passes on the fives. We've seen a lot of that on these final tables. Small pairs not getting played. Patrick Star, premium hand here, ace jack. Just going to be super lucky, unlucky to run into ace queen. And he's going to need a spade. A 10, a 5, or a jack. Doesn't get it. It's going to be GG's for Patrick Starr. <laughs> Going on 6th place for $33,300. Also got 2nd place in the other tournament. The OSS, the Moss main event. Uh, for $57,000. All in. $90,000 Sunday. Very nice result for uh, Patrick Starr. Played well. Can you imagine what it'd be like? Running deep in two big tournaments. Oh, what do we have here? Ace King. This could be some three way action. Eights is a nice hand. Queen Jack suited a nice hand to take a flop with. Oh, wow. This could have got really, really juicy if Dragolesco was in there with the Queen Jack of Spades. As it stands. FC calling one. Not going to be calling two. They called one bet because I am game could have ace queen, ace jack, ace ten, queen jack. Lots of hands are firing one bet with. Uh, I don't need a release just because there's one over card out there. If there are two over cards, often going to be releasing facing a bet. Or if there's one over card and you're facing two bets, often going to be releasing. That's what kind of the post flop play is going to look like. And I think Bald Brazzer is going to be all in here for one and a half bigs. Needs to fade the four and the eight. Successfully does. And we're up to four bigs. And oh... Probably a spot where FZ is going to be shoving 16 blinds. Oh no, not shoving because of Bald Brazzers being short. If Bald Brazzers wasn't here, this would be a shove. But because Bald Brazzers is there on the short stack, FC is going to play more cautiously. Look to make a pair before committing the rest of the chips. But on this board, I think it's going to spell trouble for FC. Probably going to be calling this bet and not really going to be able to fold uh, a hand this strong. Wow. All right. I'm game. Puts him in. FZ. No good. Ace, queen, and Bald Brazzers does find the ladder. FZ going to be finishing in fifth place, taking on $43,300. Bald Brazzers finds the ladder despite being super short and has made $60,600. Took some good luck, but it did work out. And I reckon this money's going in with Ace King. They hold here. Oh, they got it. They got a shot. Back in it. 25, 25 million. All right. So everyone guaranteed $60,000. Third place. Going to be taking home $86,300. Second place, $117,200. First place. Today's million dollar Sunday final table. We're going to be getting $159,200. See Dragolesco opening it up with the big stack. As we expect him to do. With Bald Brazzers being in play, being short, with there being a $26,000 pay jump. I expect Dragolesco to open anything playable so long. Oh, counterfeit. So long as he's the chip lead. If the chip lead swings, as it will here, if I am game wins this pot. Uh, we won't see Dragolesco opening quite as much because he's not the big stack. I am game will be. 
I think Dragolesco might be thinking about his bluffing. Ops not to. Too easy for I am game to have a jack or a king. Um, if he's going to bluff, he's looking to fold him off. Missed flush draws, missed straight draws, which are definitely in the range. All right, jack all in, Dragolesco, easy call with queens. And bald brassers, oof. Almost had a shot at another ladder up there, which would have been $26,000. Instead, once again, the ace hits. Jack Garbarino doubles up. Now him and Dragolesco are tied for second. And for our second review of the day, we have another timeout. What a lucky spot for Bald Brazzers. The big blind is sitting out. And that's like... <laughs> That's a great spot. Wait, how did they call when they're sitting out? What is this tale of the ghostly sit out player? Crazy. Anyway, Dragolas goes back. I guess it was just a glitch in the matrix. And I think Bald Brazzer's probably going to call here. We'll take a flop three way. And I'm game picking up the nut flush shot. Going to bet. Take it down. All right. Bald Brazzers. Back on life support here. Eight million. Chips all in. Jack Garbarino, easy call here with 10-9. Flops top pair. Bald Brazzers does not improve, and they're going to be our third place, fourth place finisher. Bald Brazzers taking home $60,600 for the fourth place finish. Had a nice ladder there. Had a nice ladder from 5th uh, to 4th when they had no chips and FZ had a big stack, bigger stack. But they ran that ace-queen into the ace-king of uh, I am game. So nice job there by Bald Brazzers laddering up. And oh wow. We may be heads up in a second. I am game flopping trips. Jack Garbarina with the overpair kings. Can't be overly concerned about the four. I'm gonna be betting targeting the jacks in his opponent's range i am game just raises it here right here right now i don't see how jack gets away from this hand he's got kings on a jack 4-4 board blind versus blind uh, i think this is going to be call and then check call off for the rest of it he's definitely like oh man this, this guy could have a four but i don't see how he fold yeah he's all in snap call from i'm game and uh, that's going to be a ggs just like that We've gone from uh, four-handed to heads up in two hands. Jack Arborino going out in third. Nothing he could do there. That's just extremely unlucky. All he could do is hope that the other players check make a deal before that hand happened, but it didn't. He's going to be going out in third place, taking home $86,300. And we're now heads up. I am game. $267 million. Dragolesco, 112 million. It is 65 blinds versus 30 blinds. A two to one chip advantage for I am game. Both of these players guaranteed $117,200 playing for a $42,000 pay jump. It's gonna be 159, 200 to the eventual champion. I am game running hot. Running hot, managing to get paid off in full on pretty much all his big hands. Ace, queen, min raise, pocket threes. Makes sense to just shove the pair heads up. 30 blinds are playing out of position. It's going to be pretty tough to navigate. So just shove. Can increase the stack 10% or, you know, get into a flip and hopefully win. And game flop in the ace. And, ooh, a three or a four would keep Dragolesco in the mix. And with that lucky runner runner, Dragolesco goes from being out the door to being the proud new owner of 275 million chips. I am game. Sitting on 118,000. And we got a whole new ball game here. I see I am game open shoving for 24 blinds with King 9. Feels a little bit tilty. Feels a little bit kind of overplaying, playing the hands a little fast. But we've seen that I am game has been just like willing to do that. Really willing to push the envelope. Really willing to go hard and go fast. So, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that he just said, okay, King 9, like whatever. Let's just play for all of it. I mean, it's only, what is it? It's only $42,000 they're playing for, right? 
It's not like it's a lot of money. It's only $42,000. And so we see I am game. Uh, willing to play high variance poker at this point. Open shoving 30 with the ace. And so if, uh, if you're in Dragalesco's shoes, you've got a little bit of room here between 15 big blinds. You've got the lead, you know, seven, eight orbits or so. Uh, so maybe you can just try to wait for a spot to pick off I am game who is playing quite, quite aggressively. Okay, brain. Okay. And this could be one. Turns the straight. And all right, we'll probably be able to get some value here. I am game rivering top pair. Now beats seven x six x seven six. And uh, if Dragolesco doesn't go too greedy, you should be able to get paid here. The way I am game is playing, I think you can get paid up up to eight. Yep. Great bet of seven. And now Dragolesco three to one chip lead. Uh, not going to be winning this pot. I am game taking his turn to flop the joint. A little bit of rolls reversed here, except Dragolesco probably not going to be paying off a river bet as he didn't improve. But, you know, if he hit a jack or an ace, you got to imagine he's paying off another one just like I am game did on the previous hand when he hit that eight. Dragolasco thinking about it, but thinks better of it. Oh, all right. This this could be something. Dragolasco flops trip queens. And I am game we know plays aggressively. So having raised pre-flop, we may see him put some pressure on his opponent here. The five could could kill the action. Because now if you're in... um. I'm game shoes and your opponents call the flop bet. You figure it's either a queen or a five most of the time. And once the five pairs up on the turn, you, you can't really feel like you can apply pressure to that portion of the range anymore. So now if you're Dragolesco, do you check back? Feign weakness. Give your opponent a chance to improve or bluff on the river. Or do you bet small? Hoping to get called by an ace high or a pair. <laughs> I feel like maybe you just got to check. He goes for the bet and just takes it down. I think it's one of those spots where you're only getting one more bet out of your opponent anyway. So you might as well either go for that bet on the river or check back and give them a chance to put in that bet for you. We're betting the turn. We're basically going for the turn and the river. We're looking to get both the bets in. And that just was not going to be the case there. All right, top pair for I'm game. Gut shot. Overs in a backdoor flush draw for Dragolasco. Not enough for him to get enticed. We see a difference of style where uh, I'm game probably would have just shipped this ace five preflop. Dragolasco taking a more cautious approach, just limping in. Check, check on the river. Nice value for I am game there on his full house, getting two streets. I think we'll see Dragolesco take a flop here. Interesting. All right, mid pair. Backdoor gut shot, backdoor flush draw. I am game. Backdoor flush draw, one over card. Should see a bet and a call. Turn card gives I am game a third pair. Dragolesco still beating all the over cards, all the draws. Don't think he folds just yet. But if faced with a river bet, that's a tough spot. Is a check. Will Dragolesco go for a small value bet? Probably not. A little too thin. Just checks and uh, with that. Dragolesco back into a two to one chip lead. Ooh, juicy flop here. It's mid pair and a gut shot straight flush draw for Dragolesco. It's top pair for I am game. Wouldn't fault Drago for getting involved with this one. Now picks up another gut shot to go with it. He can hit a straight with a queen or an eight. Definitely not going anywhere. Expect we'll see another call here. Uh, 
Oh, wow. What a river card. Not only does Dragalesco improve to the best hand, he improves to the best hand in a very disguised way. A queen might slow down I am game. An eight might slow down I am game. A diamond might slow down I am game because it's either a one-liner or a straight or a four flush on the board. But with this 10 pairing, I am game might just go for more value here. Now, if you're Dragalesco, do you lead out? Put the money in, make sure it doesn't go check, check. Or do you check and allow your opponent to keep betting at it? I feel like I actually like the lead. You're trying to get a king to call, and a king's going to check a lot of the time. He does go for the lead. I think you hate it if you're I am game, but I don't see how you fold. Pot's so big. Four big blinds to play for 18. Does fold. Very disciplined fold there from I am game. Recognizing that his opponent just had to have it. And now uh, it's going to be some big work to do. Five to one chip deficit. All right. I think we'll see the money go in here. A6 suited. Easy call for A3. Oh, flops. A flush draw. Prime get oh, Dragalesco turns a six. Just needs to fade a spade and he's going to be our champion. Just like that, Dragalesco takes it down. First place finisher, one hundred and fifty nine thousand two hundred dollars. G G G G G G G G G G. So once again, here is our final table, ladies and gentlemen. Obelisk eighth for thirteen thousand. Siganuso, 7th for 23,000. Patrick Starr, double final tables on one day, 6th for 33,000. FZ, 5th for 43,000. Bald Brazzers, 4th, $60,600. Jack Garbarino, $86,300. I am game oh so close to the victory. That ace queen hand settles for second place with $117,200. $100. And our champion of this week's Million Dollar Sunday is Dragalesco, taking on $159,200. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Um, let me know your thoughts on it. Leave your, leave your comments below. Talk about your favorite hands, anything and everything. And if you enjoy these kind of reviews and you want to see more of these reviews, click that link right up there for a full playlist of all the final table reviews that we have done on America's Card. And we'll continue to do them on stream every Monday on Twitch and deliver them on YouTube, edited for your viewing pleasure every Monday as well. Thanks.